Well, here on Book TV on C-SPAN 2, we want to introduce you to author Elizabeth Ames, who has written a book with Steve Forbes, How Capitalism Will Save Us, Why Free People and Free Markets Are the Best Answers in Today's Economy. Elizabeth Ames, first of all, tell us about yourself and your personal experience, particularly when it comes to economics. Okay. Well, uh, I've been a financial journalist, uh, but I've also been on both sides uh, of the press release. Um, so I started out as a journalist and um, had it my own uh, PR business and um, also done projects, other communications projects for clients, among them uh, this uh, writing, you know, co-authoring books. And uh, basically I, I've worked with Steve Forbes on his flat tax book and conversations led to the idea for this book. How did you meet Steve Forbes? I met him uh, many years ago at an event uh, that I did when I was working at the University of Southern California. And uh, one thing led to another. I moved uh, to New York, back to New York. Actually, I'm from New York. And started working at Forbes uh, in the PR department. So Elizabeth Ames, your practical experience prior to working at Forbes, how do you inject that into how capitalism will save us? Uh, well, basically, I've learned a lot since Forbes, well, when I was at Forbes, I learned a lot about markets. Uh, and again, I was a journalist. I began as a journalist and I was a business, I worked at Business Week many years ago uh, as a journalist. But when I um, started to work as a, you know, as an entrepreneur, I learned about the fact that uh, you really need to have economic freedom to create jobs. And it's something that I learned personally. And if you're obviously just getting a paycheck, you really don't understand how government can affect a small business and job creation. And I experienced that firsthand. So that was one of the things that led me to think that this would be a useful idea for a book. Overall, philosophically, how do you see the role of government, the role of Congress, the role of the president in the economy? Well, basically this book actually raises and answers the question. Uh, the, we need government, but we need government to create a stable environment for businesses to function and to create jobs. Uh, when government meddles uh, too much into the economy, uh, government and its decisions and its policies are driven by politics, and uh, markets are driven by the desire of individuals and, 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 and com companies to meet the needs, of the real world needs of people, and that's the difference between what government does and what markets do. So you need government to create to, to protect us from fraud, from bad, from, from wrongdoers. There are wrongdoers, and, and government can protect us from them. But uh, overly med meddlesome government uh, will, it, it, it goes too far, and you end up suppressing enterprise and innovation and job creation. All right, the 2008 uh, financial situation and the so called bailout, um, were, are you supportive of that? government intervention? Well, we raised and answered the question in that book, uh, uh, basically. Uh, you could see that as sort of a, a you know, a, an emergency intervention. If government had done it and gotten out, that would have been fine. Unfortunately, they, they stayed too long. You know, uh, I think that the comparison we make is to, you know, Katrina. There's emergency aid, and then basically people get up and they get back on their feet. What, unfortunately, the government has used uh, the, the financial crisis has an excuse to expand itself and expand, c control the economy. And at what point would you say the government should have stepped out that the emergency aid ends? Well, maybe they should have, I mean, they didn't allow banks that wanted to, to pay back the money. You know, obviously they were, they were making it difficult. They really made them keep it and, so, and tried to force it on banks that didn't want to take the bailouts in the first place. So basically, uh, you know, some people really have, have argued with the fact that we basically make this point that the bailout was necessary. Um, but, you know, basically it, it, it went, they went too far. And certainly afterwards, uh, they, the, they use the financial crisis as an excuse to overregulate uh, with Dodd-Frank, et cetera. Well, we're interviewing you here at Freedom Fest in right. Las Vegas. Do you find a lot of um, opposition to that idea, to some of the ideas in this book? No, I think that the people are tax. very. I, no, I think people are very much. That's what this. That's what this event is about. It is about free people and free markets, and under, the, people understand what's in this book, and that's what the, the whole idea that 
you're, you're, you best serve the needs of people by free enterprise. Uh, uh, what is free enterprise? It's, it's people trying to meet needs, their own needs and the needs of others. And that's what it's about, and that's what these people understand. They understand entre entrepreneurial business. Uh, they understand the fact that you create jobs not through government, but through innovation. You know, innovation has created the most jobs. Think about it. Has gov did government invent the automobile? No. <laughs> Elizabeth Ames, uh, what's it like to write a book with Steve Forbes? Uh, it was a great learning experience, uh, and I, I must say it was almost like a going, it was in a way it was sort of a, like a higher education. <laughs> <laughs> so is that Customized you know, better. Some of the, one of the themes that we've been talking with authors here at Freedom mm -hmm. Fest about is the moralism or the amoralism of capitalism. Is there a moral component in your view to capitalism? Yes, there is, and that's going to be the subject of the next book that's coming out uh, at the end of the month at the end of August, I should say. Uh, capitalism is moral uh, because it is, a, again, it's about meeting real world needs of other people. And it's a, a, a free market transaction is a reciprocal exchange, but that's, it's each person provides benefit to the other. Uh, uh, George Gilder, who I saw you interviewing, uh, talks about it as giving. Each side gives to the other. He's really great on, in wealth and poverty talking about that. Um, so capitalism, basically people who, who, are, who believe in big government, they see a free market transaction as a one-sided transaction, that there's exploitation, quote unquote. But it's not about that. Each side gets benefit. It may not be ideal, you know, it's, it's, it, but there's benefit always in a transaction. Otherwise, it would not occur because it's in a free market. If you're, it, no one's forcing you to enter into this exchange, and that's what makes it that's why there's benefit to both sides. If you are being forced, the, the unilateral you know, transaction is, is one that takes place between the individual and government. That's where it's unilateral. What's your enthusiasm level for Mitt Romney as a candidate? Well, I think that, I think he, uh, I think he's gonna be a, a very good president. I think, he'll, I think he, he gets it uh, and I think he's moving forward and I think he's saying the things that we need to hear. You mentioned a new book coming out. What was the title of that? Uh, the new book coming out is Freedom Manifesto, uh, Why Free Markets Are Moral and Big Government Isn't. And that's another book co-written by you and Steve Forbes? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, and uh, could... we've got it over uh, here and we'll get well, it over. It's, it... it's a little card. I can, if I can just. All right. All right. You've got your bag over there. I got it. We want I... to show you the current book while Elizabeth Ames features fishes that fishes. out, but here we go. how capitalism will save us. And this and is coming. here is the new book by Elizabeth Ames and Steve Forbes, Freedom Manifesto, and the subhead is, the subtitle is? Why Free Markets Are Moral and Big Government Isn't. And why isn't big government moral? Because big government makes decisions uh, and takes action based on uh, political agendas, based on its selfish political interests. It, it really is about meeting its own political selfish needs and free markets are meeting the real world needs of people. Well as somebody who follows economics and f a former financial journalist and somebody who has opinions on this issue, um, Bernie Madoff, Jamie Dimon, in your view were those two treated fairly by the federal government? Bernie Madoff was treated fairly by the federal government. I wouldn't even put them in the same breath. Actually, I think Bertie Madoff got what he needed to get. He was the—I uh, I think of him as the serial killer of capitalism. And you don't—you don't condemn a whole society because of a, a criminal element, uh, you know, in street crime. You don't say we shouldn't have it. Everybody should be in jail because you've got criminals. And there's bad people in all systems, but the uh, a capitalist system, a free market system, is going to channel people's self-interest into the most constructive activities that benefit everyone. And Jamie Dimon being called before Congress because his company lost money. Well, there's risk. There's risk in markets. I think he did a very good job in those hearings, uh, pushing back and, and explaining. And there's, I, I think what's really scary right now is that uh, people who don't really understand markets or don't, who don't like markets are demonizing risk. When you invest money, the, the whole point is that you may or may not succeed, and you may not, it may not work out. And uh, that's unfortunately what happens. And you know, if you don't have risks, you don't have reward. If you don't invest, you, you can't, 
you know, all of these great companies that have grown up today were somebody's risky, they were at one time risky and